You mentioned about possibly chucking a sing just a single like single sprocket on there and then some spacers to yeah, so get rid of some weight and some neatness. Exactly. I think this is going to be one of the cheapest and easiest way to save some weight from the back of the bike. Definitely. I mean, that's four big lumps of steel um, and then some pretty weird like cut down weird spacers on there. I mean, a, a single speed sprocket that will fit this hub, which is a standard Shimano spline, is like four quid, five quid. And then a set of spacers, um, less than a tenner, I think. So you save quite a lot yeah. of weight and neaten it up for not, not too much money. That's an economical way to make the bike better. Yeah, so you're on uh, 18 tooth. Yep. So Gusset do one. That's like a standard standard brand that, you know, you can, even get, you can even probably pick up from your local bike shop. They might even have it in stock if you need to get one quickly. And then Shimano do, do one as well. Um, I think the, basically the Shimano was original, the Gusset one's a copy. Yeah. They work just as well. They're cheaper. Good go, for, go for that. So this hub is a Shimano spline. Uh, you've got some screw on ones here. These ones are more trial specific, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. a lot of the trials hubs um, will use a, th a screw on thread, a bit like a fixie or a track, a track cog. Um, but a lot of the time, they'll run quite a lot wider base. That's like a 10 mil wide base. So that's basically 10 threads contact between the hub or crank and the sprocket. Um, look out for, if you buy like a fixie or a track cog off eBay or something like that, they can often be a slightly different thread size. So these are 1.37 inch. There's a 1.375 inch thread, oh. which is slightly bigger diameter, so it, it doesn't, fit, doesn't fit properly. And then they also, they have a narrow base, like six or seven mil, so there's not as much thread contact. And as soon as you stomp on the pedals really hard on a trials bike, whoosh, you've got a knackered hub. Yeah. Um, so it's worth just checking out the spec of any sprockets that you buy to make sure they're gonna be, gonna be up for trials use. So a uh, question we get asked quite often is about chain line. And this is normally something you see on like single speed bikes and fixie bikes. And the idea is so the front and the rear sprockets are really nicely aligned. So your chain isn't off to one side. Um, if it's off to one side, it's more likely to skip and it'll wear out more quickly. So the way that we do it is to measure from the center line of the bike. And that's where the chain line is defined. So we've got the middle of the seat, seat tube to the middle of that sprocket. 47 and a half ish, which is pretty common for a trials bike with a wide BB. And then we want to find the middle point of the rear hub and work out that same distance, and that's where your sprocket goes. Okay. Um, so with a hub being 135 wide, your middle's at 67 and a half, which from memory works out pretty much bang on one of the logos on this hub, which is a nice little, nice little helper. Measuring that 47 mil from there, so you want to be pretty much where that current sprocket is. That one there. Okay. Yeah, I think we've got the classic trials problem. So even though all these three these sprockets are pinned together with three pins, when you're putting so much torque through one of the sprockets, these pins sometimes actually break, and that sprocket digs right into the free body. So we need to try and get it off somehow. And obviously, if you just try and whack it backwards, the free body spins. Um, so I think we'll have a look at the teeth to find out which one's been used most because that's the one that's likely to be dug in. It seems to be the second one. So if we can hold the free hub together. Can you help a cap, can I borrow your set please? So basically it looks like this sprocket is the one that's had all the drive. So it's probably going to be dug in and that's what's stopping us getting this, this little block off. So if we hold it one way and tap it back the other way, and fingers crossed, we'll see it release. There we go, I think it's loose now. There we go, so fingers crossed. Now lever these little sprockets off. Nice. There we go. So you get a little bit of an indentation on the free body, which might stop these next ones going off easily. As you can probably see. Oh, there we Thanks, go. Cap. Thank you, Cap. No problem. For your muscles. Um, yeah, so those, are, those indentations are there. You can see them quite pronounced actually on this one, where the sprockets are dug into the, the free body and it's actually stopping that sprocket from, from coming off. So yeah. we'll just take a file on it and just skim these lumps off and then I'll be fine. Cool. cool. So if we've done that right, we should have a sprocket that now yeah, it comes off. Nice. Super duper. So we were 47 and a half mil from the logo on the hub. Puts us about 
pretty much bang in the middle of the free up. Yep. So, spacer on. Spock it on. Spacer on. And then, obviously, the spacer needs to be slightly sticking out over the free up so the lock ring can tighten it down. Just going to swap those two round because that spacer felt like it was flaring out slightly, so we put the bigger one on the outside a bit more, a bit more backbone. What kind of tightness? Well, reckon? the official torque setting is 40 newton meters, which is pretty tight. I mean, I would never go that tight on a, on a trials one because you're not like you're shifting backwards and forwards across a block. So just a bit of a nip just to hold it in place, really. Um, especially if you've got like an aluminium um, spacer like this, you could end up flaring the spacer and cracking it or something. So just a good nip of the ratchet and it should be good to go there. Cool.